The best known book by author Clive Staples, or C.S. Lewis, is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. The book, which came out in 1951, is a children's tale that deals with tough moral questions. During World War II, Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy Pevensey leave London for the safety of the country to live with the old professor. Lucy finds a closet while she is looking around the professor's strange house. When she climbs inside and magically finds herself in a snowy forest, an old light marks an opening, and there she meets Mr. Tumnus, a fawn who is shocked to see a human child. Lucy goes home with Mr. Tumnus for tea, but the fawn starts to cry and tells Lucy that he works for the White Witch who is the evil queen of Narnia and uses magic to keep the country frozen in winter all the time. As his job, Mr. Tumnus has to capture any person he finds, but Lucy begs him to let her go. Now that he knows her, Mr. Tumnus agrees and says he could never hurt her. Lucy goes back to the real world and tells her brothers about her trip to Narnia, but they don't believe her. The closet is no longer special when Lucy takes her sisters and brothers to see it. Lucy is picked on by Edmund, who calls her silly and is very mean to her. While the kids are playing hide and seek one day, Edmund sees Lucy go into the closet and decides to follow her and make fun of her. Not long after that, Edmund also ends up in Narnia. When Edmund meets the white witch that Mr. Tumnus told Lucy about, she only tells Edmund that she is the queen of Narnia. The witch gives Edmund a magical Turkish treat, which makes everyone who tries it, want more right away. The witch uses Edmund's desire to get him to bring his brothers to Narnia to meet her. According to the witch, if Edmund does what she says, she will make him king and give him Turkish treats all the time. As Edmund heads back to the closet, he sees Lucy talking to her brother about the scary witch. Edmund tells himself that the stories Lucy tells him about the witch were made up by her enemies because he doesn't believe Lucy and wants the Turkish treat so badly. When Lucy and Edmund get back to their own world, Edmund tells Peter and Susan that he hasn't been to Narnia because he and Lucy were pretending. Peter and Susan start to think that Lucy's view of things is not based in fact, so they go to talk to the professor. The professor doesn't agree with them. Instead, he shocks the brothers by saying that Lucy might be telling the truth. Later on, the kids hide in the closet to avoid the housekeeper, and all four of them find their way into Narnia. The others are furious when Edmund makes a mistake and says he has been to Narnia before. They are led by Lucy who finds that the witch has caught Mr. Tumnus at his home when she takes them there. Lucy is heartbroken when she learns that the fawn got in trouble for helping her. The others agree to help Lucy save Mr. Tumnus, even though Edmund doesn't agree. When the kids see a robin, it leads them to Mr. Beaver, who is friends with Mr. Tumnus and takes them to his house. They meet Mrs. Beaver and eat a tasty meal there. Mr. Beaver tells the kids that the best thing they can do is go with him to meet Aslan, a big lion who has been missing for a long time but is supposed to be the owner of Narnia. Mr. Beaver talks about the Narnian prophecies that say the White Witch will no longer be in charge when Aslan comes back to Narnia and four human children sit on the thrones of Ker Paravel, a castle on the coast. After making plans to meet Aslan at the stone table the next day, Edmund sneaks off, and Mr. Beaver knows he has betrayed them. Edmund finds the witch's house and tells her that Aslan is back and that the beavers have a plan. The witch is very angry and tells her helpers to get her sledge ready so she can catch the kids. In the meantime, Edmund's other brothers and the beavers rush to the stone table. Along the way, the kids meet Father Christmas, who can finally enter Narnia after many years because the witch's power is weakening. He gives them gifts that will help them with the trials that are coming. The snow starts to melt and signs of spring start to show as the small party goes on. 
As the witch runs to find the kids, she turns some animals into stone because they are celebrating the return of Father Christmas. When the witch treats Edmund badly and won't give him any more Turkish treats, Edmund starts to realize he made a mistake. The witch is very angry when she realizes that her sledge is useless because the snow has melted so much, forcing her to walk. When Lucy, Susan, and Peter get to the stone table, they are scared and amazed by Aslan. Lucy asks Aslan to save Edmund. Peter is to be High King, and the lion shows him the castle of Care Paravel. The lion says he will do everything he can to help. The sound of Susan's horn, which was a gift from Santa Claus, stops Aslan and Peter and warns them of danger. Aslan doesn't let the other animals help Susan, and sends Peter by himself to prove himself. Susan is being attacked by Magram, the witch's wolf and head of the secret police, Peter finds out. He steps in and kills Magram with the sword that Santa gave him for Christmas. When Aslan sees another wolf running away, he sends some of his followers after it, knowing that it will lead them back to the witch. The witch decides to murder Edmund so that no one else can sit on any of the four thrones at Care Paravel. Aslan's troops appear and save Edmund just as the witch is about to kill him. The witch and her dwarf helper change into a rock and a tree stump to avoid being caught. When Edmund tells his brothers he's sorry at the stone table, they all forgive him. The witch sends a servant to the camp to ask to talk to Aslan, and the lion accepts. The witch demands Edmund's life when she gets there because old, powerful magic gives her the power to kill any traitor in Narnia. Aslan talks to her and makes a deal. When they come out of their talk, Aslan looks angry and the witch looks happy. The lion tells his troops to leave the table and set up camp somewhere else. It's hard for Lucy and Susan to sleep that night. When the sisters look for Aslan, they see him leave the camp. The girls follow the lion from afar, but he sees them and tells them they can go with him if they promise to stop when he tells them to. Aslan tells the sisters to leave him when they get back to the stone table. Lucy and Susan don't want to leave Aslan. So they hide in the trees and watch as the witch and her monstrous followers come to make fun of Aslan. The witch finally ends it by killing Aslan on the stone table and telling everyone that the lion chose to die instead of Edmund. The sisters keep watch over Aslan's body and see what looks like a group of mice eating away at the lion's chains. As the sun comes up, there is a loud crack. The table has broken in half and Aslan's body is gone. All of a sudden, the lion himself shows up, alive and well. Aslan takes Lucy and Susan on a magical journey through Narnia to the witch's house. There, he frees all the animals that the witch had turned to stone, including Mr. Tumnus. Next, Aslan takes the sisters and the freed animals to fight with Peter's army against the witch and her followers. Peter's army is outnumbered and having a hard time, but Aslan quickly changes the course of the fight. The witch's followers lose when the lion kills her. When Edmund risks his life to break the witch's wand and gets badly hurt, he makes up for it in fight. With the special drink that Father Christmas gave her, Lucy saves Edmund, and Aslan makes all four of them kings and queens of Narnia. Aslan sneaks off during the party and leaves Narnia in the care of the children, and the children grow up to run the realm well as adults. Following many years, Mr. Tumnus informs the kings and queens that the white stag, whose capture gives wishes to anyone, has been seen in Narnia. Following the stag back to the light that marks the entrance to Narnia, the rulers set out to catch it. The four siblings follow the stag through a jungle and end up falling out of the closet in the professor's house. Time has stopped, and they are kids again. They can't wait to tell the professor about their trip to Narnia. The old man believes them and tells them that they will go back to the magical land someday.
If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.